why would anyone hire somebody uh, if, uh, you know, I, obviously, if they, why would anyone hire somebody that they knew from the past, right? They had altercations with them and they despise them, you know? Like, I wouldn't want to, uh, you know, be around somebody like that. You know, we have, uh, not that we're going to have disagreements, but obviously, you know, uh, I don't see eye to eye with you. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to be around you. I don't want to know you, you know? Why would, uh, not, not just one employer, a couple employers, you know? And, you know, it's not just, you know, uh, I might have said things to them. And, you know, it, it's in the past, but... Um, it just reminds me of like this, you know, a struggle between good and evil, you know, like, um, let's say I know someone is, uh, just evil, um, and not just manipulative, but, you know, a, a form of de a degenerate in some, in some, uh, some way, just, you know, just like, just a lousy person to some degree. Like, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, if let's say I have a business or, I was in a place of employment, they had my opinion, I probably wouldn't want to uh, be around that person, you know, on a personal level, if I knew them, you know, they would be like that person, because uh, a work ethic is something different, you know, but I mean, uh, yeah, and like, you know, it's not that I'm the degenerate, it's just that, you know, uh, you know, if someone really like uh, hated me, despised me, or w they knew that you know, we didn't, we would, we wouldn't get, not just get along, but there was something like that. Why would they even want to hire me? Couldn't understand it, you know. For a long time, I thought, you know, it's just a big game. It's like, you know, like, I, you know, uh, I said something in the late 90s to Uncle Stanley over there. And it was like, you know, that, that phrase crying wolf, because it happened to me the next year, you know, stuff started happening. You know, my first job, you know, uh, uh, my, my, my legal job on the books was a, was a movie theater. And the second summer around, you know, there was just people there that, that worked there. And, um, actually I was selling weed over, uh, <laughs> uh, on the side. I was selling the, the weed cause, you know, I wanted, uh, not just to make money, but, uh, I didn't want to go and buy, and buy, uh, uh, you know, the weed for myself, so I bought like a quarter of a pound for myself, and I sold some of it, but regardless, you know, things happen, you know, uh, yeah, I got, uh, I don't know for like a better word, assaulted, I got robbed, but, you know, uh, I told Stanley and Nimick over there that, you know, there's people in this, this job that I know them from somewhere, and I don't remember vividly if it was true or not, you know, there might have been somebody, there might have been people that came to the movie theater, and, they knew me, they knew Luke or Lucas, the, the other one, my, my brother, as people call him, you know? I know that for sure now. I think I sensed it then too. But then after that, it was just like, you know, every job I had, it was like, you know, people from the past, not my directly, but his, you know? And it, it, it was creepy and disturbing to some degree. Because, you know, you work like a month, two months, and then you just figure out, well, oh, this person died, that, and the other from like three, four years ago. And it's like, you know, what do you, you, you know, you're going to go up to, hey, did you know me like four years ago? Did you know that person four years ago? And like, you know, you know how like mentally draining it is to have every job like that to the point you just like, well, I just, I'm, I'm not going to look for work. I got to make my own mind, be my own boss. That's the only uh, option available, you know, and you become conscious of that. Except after a while, you know, you just, you know, I mean, how are you going to, uh, you know, you never did anything like that. You're going to open up a business when, you know. Uh, not only do you live in your mother, mother's house, you have no money and stuff. You got to start somewhere, right? So, you know, you go and it's like, you know, whatever. I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. I'm just going to go at a job and just size people up. Just try to think really hard of where I know them from this and that and just be brutally honest. Not angry, not violent, just brutally honest. You know? But after all, that doesn't work either. Because you get to the job and First or second day, you just get like, you know, uh, this, this, this hatred thrown upon you for no reason. And to the point, just like, you know, well, he's from Poland. I never seen him, you know, before. So maybe something, you know, other happens. You have a re repression, but then you're not 100% sure if it's true. And, you know, you go up to a person and, you know, like, well, you're going to 
Do I know you from somewhere? How about this, this, and that? And will, will they say anything? You know, will they, will they be like, what? What are you talking about? Are you, are you drunk? You high? Yeah. You know? Just like, you know, the level of discomfort, how that feels, it's unparalleled. You know, I felt animosity in Amtec the first day. And the second day I was there. From uh, the manager that became the manager. Both of them, especially the uh, JK over there, you know. You know, he, he enjoyed the, the fact that I had bad knees and I had to, like, uh, bend down on my knees and put screws in the in the plywood so they would, like, you know, drill them, which I thought it was illegal. I don't know if they got a permit or not. But I was putting screws in and I was bending for, like, two, three, four minutes. And I, I had to stand up. I had to massage my knees. And he just, he, just, he would smile when I was hurting, you know. I mean, it's like, you know. What do you do? To, what do you say to someone like that? You know, I mean, it's unbelievable. I never really knew it was gonna be like that, am thing. But I told myself, this is the last job. You know, if it doesn't work out here. I'm not going anywhere, or I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. College, maybe, maybe that's what I was thinking. But I was like, it's probably gonna be like that there too. You know, like I don't have time for that. I want to live my life. I don't want. Uh, uh, you know, some some creepy people that hate me and just like, you know, being around me and my job and my job. It's like, you know, I didn't really kill anybody in the beginning, you know. The first day uh, that I interviewed uh, by Adam Novak over there, you know, he was telling me the, these crazy things that there's insurance. But uh, I don't even know. He, he said, there's no insurance here. There's this and that. You get $14 an hour. Uh, the first two weeks going to pay cash. You got to give this, this and that, your number and your last employment because the boss wants to find out who you are. I was like, yeah, all right, whatever. Anyway, and I think I told Adam, no, like we were standing by this ramp. Jan was, JK was in the back. I I, I think I saw him, he just, and Jan was there. They, they came out, they just saw me. I was talking to Adam, and you know, they had junk cars, junk trucks. And I'm looking at it, and I was happy because it was Jevis. I was like, oh, it's Polish beer. You know, I like beer, but it's like, you know, I might be delivering, that's pretty cool. And he's, you know, I told him, it was like, uh, you know what? Well, Oh, he said it about the insurance. I was like, well, you know, it's a Polish company. I understand. Maybe it wasn't the nicest thing to say, you know? Because I'm pretty sure, just from a logical standpoint, there's Polish people that take care of the workers, you know? But, I mean, honestly, uh, the, the newest truck they had was, and that was 2016, I didn't know it then, was a 2006 Freightliner, which I love driving because it's manual. I became, you know, in love with it later because it's manual when you sit up, this and that. But all the other trucks, it was just like uh, beyond raggedy and uh, garbage like. It was unbelievable. And they labeled themselves a multi multi million dollar beer distributor company. Right. Uh, yeah, one of those trucks, you know, yeah. They didn't have, they didn't have it was ripped off, uh, you know, emergency brake. You know, the other truck, uh, it was just, <clears throat> it would overheat. But between seats, it would just get so hot from something. I couldn't even put, put my lunch back there uh, you know, on, on the floor, you know. And it was a lot of issues. It was all these other issues with the trucks, you know. Uh, the, the the ceiling that was leaking. Uh, a couple of weeks in, uh, you know, I would sit there and just look at it. And I was like, before I, before I leave, because Adam was about to leave. He's going to go to Poland. You know, it was the summer. He would always talk about Janusz is going to take over. JK is going to take over. the new manager. In the first weeks, he was telling me that. He said, I'll fix that. And I, and I think I told him, but I was like, you're the manager. Why do you have to fix that? You know, why don't you just hire somebody and just patch up the roof? And you know, they never did. Till like two, three years later, um, it started leaking. And not the pictures that I put on Google, but I never took pictures of that. If I did, I think I deleted it. Those pallets, they just got soaked in rainwater. You know, and that beer stank. It was mold on it too. It was horrible. And then, you know, J.K. Yamash had us clean the beer and, like, assort it into, like, new packages. Uh, old Zhivyet's uh, boxes, which were unbelievably uh, difficult to transport with the hand truck. And I put that, uh, you know, a picture on Google, you know, that I had to, I had to use uh, the store, uh, you know, shopping cart. And my hand truck, that hand truck, any hand truck, I couldn't do it because, like, the third layer, it would just, like, fall off. I had to hold it. You know, and it was the old boxes, you know, anyone that's a beer uh, consumer, I mean, some store owners will tell you that people, when they see a new box, they lay off of it. They won't touch it for, for a while because they think it's, I don't know, they changed the recipe, they something different. It's a branding thing. It's a marketing thing, you know, 
And yes, those old boxes, your boxes were nicer, much more colorful, you know, but they were just very uh, unpractical. And, you know, anytime there was a breakage or, uh, you know, we had to clean beer and we had to uh, repack it in the warehouse after some time, you know, those are the boxes that we use. And, you know, I, would, uh, I tell some, some store owners or clerks, not owners, but clerks, but it's like, after a while, it's like, they don't even care. They didn't care. Just sometimes it gets pushed out, you know. This is why, you know, like, uh, not saying that I would do something like that better, but it, it, it's a loss of product. It's a loss of product on on the managers, not so much the uh, the workers or the owner. Who knows? Maybe the owner didn't care anyway, you know. But that's a, that's your loss, buddy. Yeah, you... Uh, your inactivity uh, to, to take care of the warehouse where you store the beer, uh, you damage the product. Yeah. You're responsible for that. Not us. It's not that I, sh I was angry that you know, I couldn't transport that too, but it was just like, it's just sloppy, inefficient work. You know, it, it's just unbelievable. And you know, at some, some of these beers that we cleaned, you had to wear gloves. And I'm not saying I cut myself, but there was just these little pieces of glass on it, you know. Coincidentally, you fast forward a couple of years later, I ordered something from, uh, you know, uh, the beer delivery service from another liquor store, uh, Sam Adams, and they had all these shards of glass, little pieces of glass, you know, they rebox and they just give it to you, you know, and, you know, I mean, it's like where you draw the line where just like, you know, you're going to take sandpaper and do that. Are you going to take a scraper and do that? Probably. Right. But they didn't even do that. Yeah. And I'm taking, you know. Because you have to do it, you have to do that. And, you know, it's like, you know, we were doing a semi-dark, uh, you know, warehouse cleaning that. Uh, the water was disgusting and dirty. Like, and then later we started putting bleach in it. But, you know, the beer smelled like a bleach afterwards. I mean, it's like, you know, yeah, <laughs> you did that. And, you know, not that I have to clean it up. It's like, you know, uh, who wants to, who will know out there that they're touching, you know, disgusting beer that may have glass on it, which... We did a good job. It didn't afterwards, but, you know, it just, like, the dark water that we cleaned it with bleach is just horrible. I wouldn't even want to touch that stuff. And then, you know, uh, JK Janusz over there, uh, once in a while, you know, expired beer. And even that beer that just, like, we, we didn't box it. He was like, hey, go over there and, you know, take some take some beer for yourself. And I didn't do that time. Actually, I didn't want anything. But even though it was disgusting, you know, just like, I don't, I don't want your free beer. You know, I can afford seven or eight dollars, man. I, what, you gonna give me a favor by giving me free beer? Give me a break. You know? But yeah, <laughs> there's a couple people that did. They took like a black trash bag and they put a couple beers in there and they walked out. And he was like, oh, don't do it on camera because the boss lady will see it. I'm just like, Jesus, man. It's like, it's like you know, being at home with my mom and you know, telling me you drank too much or something like that. It was, just, it was childish. Like, I, I don't have patience for that, you know? I became just aggravating, just this, just, I didn't want to, I don't want to buy anything. I'm not going to get into how once a week you could purchase a case of beer for $21. And then uh, the boss, like, Beata, oh yeah, she, uh, you know, she has charge on me pending right now. But she miscounted, I had to pay twice. It happened like two times. The second time I stood up for myself, no, I'm not giving you that money, I already paid for that. Not only is it a legal exchange because it's cash and, you know, uh, you're not paying tax for it, this and that, but, you know, it's, yeah, it was cheaper, but it's just like, after a while, I stopped doing that. I, just, I, read, I went to stores for a couple of months and I bought my own beer, even a Polish beer. And, you know, JK was like, well, he don't drink it anymore. And, yeah, it's cool because he didn't see me, uh, you know, getting the one case every every week, you know. But it's just like, you know, it's not about immaturity or like, you know, that I was like, you know, emotionally uh, abused to a certain extent. I mean, it was uh, so much animosity, especially from Janusz, you know? Even Adam didn't do it like that. You know, Adam, would, uh, the Adam, the previous manager, he he was a little bit different. Yeah, he was a, he was a bit of a dick. He was, but uh, he wasn't that much of a, like a, a child about it, at least to me. You know, when Adam got angry, he got quiet and, you know, it was that. And then he wouldn't talk to you or he just wouldn't, you know, he got angry too. But, that particular person, you know, he just, I mean, it was just like uh, the level of, uh, of childishness and degrading a person. You know, saying, no, the worker is my dad. And I laughed at it, too, because he was older and we would always be driving together. But after a while, I just like, you know, it's like 
started thinking like, well, who the fuck are you? I mean, what do you, I'm, I, you know, I'm not a little kid. Even if I was a little kid, that'd still be a little, that, that'd be worse, actually. You know, it was just a lot of that. But the the inefficiency, the mistakes, the, I mean, the, uh, what, what do you call it? The sloppiness, uh, you know, uh, of, of the work and mishandling of product. It was just, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable, you know. Um... To the point where I just couldn't believe it, you know. <clears throat> and after a while, I didn't even feel bad about saying that to Adam. Well, it's a Polish company, so I get it, you know. Well, I use a stereotype. Well, look how look how fitting your stereotype is, you know. Because uh, I rarely I rarely use stereotypes. Yeah, I can't. But I mean, a stereotypes exist for a reason, right? And you know. There's probably other companies out there and people that aren't Polish and probably would do that and worse, you know. But it's like, you know, why would you hire me? You think I'm going to be quiet and not say anything to you about your inefficiency and, you, and about your inadequacy? Then why just hire me? Why? 